Hey guys, I'm back with another story time and this one's kind of scary and I'm literally filming in the house that this story is like about so I already know that I'm going to like literally scare myself in the making of this video. I really really believe in like ghosts and demons and like supernatural things like that like you know some people don't believe in that and think it's like hocus pocus but like I really really believe in that stuff like it's an interest of mine like the amount of books I've read on like demonic possessions and like hauntings and just stuff like I've educated myself enough to know that some of that shit cannot be fake so that shit scares the fuck out of me and this is the story time about how my childhood house which is the house I'm in right now I'm in Texas for the next two weeks used to be haunted 100% used to be haunted and like after hearing the story you can make your own claim on whether or not my house was haunted but it was fucking haunted, okay? Back when I was way, way, way younger, like when we first moved into this house, and we moved into this house right before my eighth birthday. Only eight, like really little. So that means my sister was about to turn five because we're like three years apart. Me and my sister were both really, really young, and people say that when you're very little, like you're really receptive to like supernatural forces or like weird phenomena because you're so young like you're more intuitive whatever what first happened which was when my whole family was kind of like whoa like is our house haunted was over a period of like multiple months and it happened multiple times on and off was my mom would wake up in the middle of the night and hear the sound of a little girl crying Oh, that's so scary. Even saying that is so fucking scary. Like, oh my god, I literally don't like scary things involving like little kids and shit. Like, ah, I don't like it. Don't like it. Like, don't like it. No, no, no. And my mom would wake up because she would literally hear like some little girl crying at night. And she would always wake up and come upstairs and check on me and my sister. And we would always be like dead ass asleep. Haha, <laughs> dead asleep. Okay, not funny. We would be asleep as fuck, so like it wasn't one of us. And my mom would be like, what the fuck? Like my mom woke up multiple times to the sound of a little girl crying. And then what happened to kind of seal the deal to like confirm that my mom wasn't just crazy or my mom wasn't dreaming or what the fuck ever was, way back when my grandfather is now dead now, but at the time that he was alive when I was only like eight or nine, he woke up one night also in the middle of the night when he was staying at my house because he heard a little girl crying and my mom heard it that same night also and went upstairs to check again and ran into her dad, which is my grandpa, and they were both like, we both heard that, right? Like we both hear this kid crying. And again, me and my sister were both asleep. Like they did not know where it was coming from, whatever. That was the very first thing that happened. We were kind of like, what the fuck is that shit about? And me being little, like I did not want to hear shit like that. Like that was so scary to me like I was fucking petrified like I did not even want to walk upstairs or downstairs in my house alone like I was that scared like even if I want to just go upstairs to like get a t-shirt from my bedroom or something like I wanted my sister to come with me because I was just so fucking scared and I remember specifically at that period of time in my life which let's say this just went over like about like maybe a two or three year time span I remember just feeling put off like in my own house at this time also we had this super old intercom throughout our whole house like in every bedroom and then the main intercom piece was in the kitchen so that you could like push a button and like talk to a certain bedroom to like tell someone to come down for dinner or whatever like the house came with the intercom it was super old from when the house was like first built whatever and after like a few months of us living there the intercom would just start clicking like making all these weird clicking noises on its own like almost like morse code through clicks and there was nothing we could do to like stop it like we would turn the intercom off like we would do everything that you could physically do to like stop it from making noise and it would still just like make noise on its own like how fucking weird is that also so this thing was always making noise my mom always heard some little girl crying then it got even fucking weirder because my little sister being only like five to like seven or eight herself when this stuff was going down she started to talk about a little girl named Sarah that she would talk to at night. Like, what the fuck? And being only, like, six years old, like, obviously she's not smart enough to, like, make something up or, like, oh, I'm gonna pull a prank over on my family and scare my family. Like, she was a little fucking kid. Like, a literal toddler. Like, she's not gonna be smart enough to make this stuff up. So then my sister would start talking about how, yeah, yeah, there was, like, this little girl in our house that she would talk to. And we would literally, like, catch my sister at night just in her closet with the door shut with the light on like all hours of the night 
literally just sitting in her closet talking to herself and when we would ask her like one what are you doing in your closet like in the wee hours of the morning and two who are you talking to she'd always just be like oh i'm just talking to my friend sarah like literally so fucking casual about it like she wasn't scared at all like she was just like what do you mean like i'm just fucking chilling with my friend sarah like what the fuck like that scared me so much like i pretty sure i like cried when my sister said that because i was like nine and that was scary as fuck i was like fuck that shit fuck this shit my mom's hearing a little girl cry my sister's now claiming she's talking to little girls like what the fuck is this shit about and then in the bedroom that my grandparents stayed in our guest bedroom over the years that my grandma has stayed there even after my grandpa died even when this shit was going down when my grandpa was alive and not alive because like i said this went on for multiple years my grandma would tell us like in the morning when she woke up from staying in our guest bedroom that someone or something would literally pull all of the sheets and the comforter off the end of her bed and she would like wake up with no sheets on her because she could like feel them being pulled off her and she would have to like wake up and like get the sheets and like put them back on the bed to like go back to sleep like are you fucking kidding me if that shit ever happened to me in my bedroom oh my fucking god i would literally not sleep anywhere by my parents bedroom for probably years like like i said thank god none of this weird shit happened to me but the guest bedroom is literally down the fucking hall like 10 feet from the entrance of my bedroom so like all this shit was happening on the floor i live on like where my bedroom is and I was so fucking scared even just hearing like all my family members say all this fucking weird crazy stuff the closest that ever happened to me personally experiencing anything other than the fact that I always just felt really put off in my own house and something just felt weird and there was always just like this eerie kind of vibe but like I never felt unsafe like I never felt like I can't be in my house alone you know like I was definitely scared because I was little and hearing that the sheets are coming off the bed and there's little girls crying and my little kid sister is talking to fucking weird things in her closet at night like that was enough to really scare me like as a child but the only things that i experienced personally was i was standing getting ready or like brushing my hair or whatever the fuck you do at like nine years old in my bathroom in this house right up here like this is the fucking house that this happened in i was getting ready and i left the bathroom door open and when the bathroom doors open you can see into the hallway behind you when you're looking in the mirror like you can see everything behind you you know like from the reflection and I was just getting ready whatever I saw someone walk past in the hallway behind me like in the mirror like I didn't physically see it but I saw it in the reflection and I just assumed it was my sister so I was like hey Kirsten like can you pass me blah 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 like I wanted her to like bring me like socks or something like I was getting ready and I specifically asked her to like bring me something and there was no response and I was like Kirsten what the fuck like come on like bring me my shit I mean obviously it didn't cuss at like nine years old this is like a reenactment and I was just like Kirsten like come on like bring me my socks or whatever the fuck it was for some reason my memory is telling me socks like maybe I really did want socks I don't know I was like Kirsten like bring them to me again no response I was like what the fuck I was then getting annoyed so I like walk out into the hall and like barge into my sister's room and no one's there and I'm like what the fuck so when I run downstairs and I'm like screaming for my sister I'm like Kirsten Kirsten like can't find her and my parents were like what are you doing and I was just like I literally just thought Kirsten was upstairs like I saw her like walk past me in the hallway and my parents literally told me that Kirsten wasn't even home. So what the fuck was that about? That's pretty fucking scary being only like eight or nine years old and being told that the ghost is the ghost of a little girl and having a little girl as a sister like it would be pretty easy for me to think the ghost of a little girl was my sister you know like that's pretty fucking scary and being super young and then the other thing that happened this was the scariest thing that happened to me personally was I was downstairs in my mom's study like where like the computer is because at the time we just had like one family computer so I was just like on the computer downstairs whatever and I felt someone like walk into the room behind me I just assumed it was like one of my parents or something and someone literally picked up all my hair on my back like picked up my hair and then dropped my hair on my back like literally like picked up my hair and then dropped it on my back and I thought it was just my mom like oh like hey sweetie like him playing with your hair and I literally whipped around and I there was nobody there and again I got up and I was like hello like what the fuck like who just fucking touched my hair and that day either I was home alone or the only person that was home was my dad and my dad wouldn't have done that in the first place and my dad was like I didn't do that like I've been in the yard working like it was another situation where it was not anyone that I lived with and I was just like 
what the fuck something literally just picked up my hair like we ain't fucking around no more some shit just fucking touched me like next level like made fucking contact with my human body and that was like the scariest fucking thing and so after those two incidents that i experienced personally and after literally an extended period of probably like two fucking years of my sister just always sitting in her closet and always talking to this little girl and my mom and my grandfather hearing little girl crying and like all the spooky shit and just the house feeling off and me being so scared to even go upstairs or downstairs by myself. I was literally so scared just because I had this really scary feeling. Like, I don't know, like it felt like something was off. And then the other thing that happened, this happened to my mom also, was my mom was home alone and she was putting away laundry and she was putting towels in this like cubby where she keeps towels in her bathroom. And she told us when we all came home from school and work that day, whatever, that every time she went in the bathroom to put more towels away, random drawers would be open and she would like close them and just kind of be like that's kind of weird go back out in the hallway like get more towels come back to put more stuff away and like more drawers would be open again and I was like what the fuck like that is scary too like shit like that like I'm so glad that like these things didn't happen to me like it definitely happened to my mom so like the whole theory was like okay it's the ghost of a little girl that was connected to the intercom she was trying to communicate with us through the intercom she was really attached to my little sister because they're probably like the same age and my sister was so young that of all family members she would like intuitively or like psychically be able to pick up on that stuff or see those things much more quickly than like the rest of us would be and then we also thought maybe it was attached to my mom because if it is a small child like it wants that like motherly figure because it definitely like kind of like did things or like made noises or just whatever that my mom like witnessed or picked up on like much more so than the rest of us we finally got that oldest fuck intercom removed from our house like it didn't even work it was always clicking like morse code like whatever the fuck it was doing it would click even when it was off it was just old and tacky looking because it came with the house and now it's like the 2000s like we got to update this shit and literally the fucking day that we removed that oldest fuck intercom system from my house everything stopped literally everything there was never anything spooky that happened again there was never any weird occurrence no one saw anything again no one heard anything again the feeling that I always felt of just like something's off like there's this like presence or something this where I felt scared that feeling just went away I was never scared again I can now go into the basement of my house at midnight and not be scared I can go upstairs and film this video upstairs in my house alone and not be scared like I that feeling does not exist anymore so like I don't know if there was some like spirit connected to the intercom and I don't know if that like morse code clicking was maybe like it trying to communicate with us somehow I don't fucking know I literally have chills even just telling this story like sitting in the house that this happened in like 10 years ago and like telling this story like ugh, I like literally spook myself so fucking easily if any of you have ever been to a haunted hotel or have experienced a haunting in your own home or seen a ghost or anything like that please comment below and tell me me, like please like I really do take the time to read all the comments in general but I love shit like that so I will fucking eat it up like so please share your weird spooky like psychic ghostly haunting whatever stories down below that's fucking cool as always thanks for watching I hope this was a little more interesting a different kind of story time feel free to check me out on social media I post on Instagram and Snapchat Basically every single day, I'll put the usernames to both of those down below. I also updated my like banner on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching this on an actual computer, check that out and tell me if you like it because that was really hard for me to do. I did not know how to fucking make one of those. It took me like hours, but I did it. <laughs> make sure you subscribe. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, which I know in the grand scheme of YouTube world like is nothing. But to me, that's a thousand people that tune in to like watch my videos and to leave comments and to interact with me and I love it. I literally love all fucking 1,000 of you and I'm saying thank you now in advance for when we hit 1,000 subscribers because we're literally just like 10 people away and that's so fucking exciting and I do want to say that if you ever leave me a comment or message me on YouTube or send me an email because apparently like you can do that. I didn't even know you could do that but I've gotten some emails from some girls 
or send me a Snapchat message, whatever. Like I do read them. I do take the time and 95% of the time I will reply unless I'm really busy or something's going on that I can't, but I do try to reply to every single person. And on my Snapchat, if you send me a personal Snapchat, it's going to say pending because I have so many random people following me on Snapchat, including like random men that like think I'm pretty or something. I don't fucking know. So I can't just have my Snapchat super public because I don't want to receive like random dick pics or like gross messages, you know, like trying to like protect myself a little bit. But every once in a while, I do make my Snapchat public just to see the messages or Snapchats that I have received over the past few weeks or something. So if you send me a Snapchat and it says pending, it's not because like I blocked you or I'm not like wanting to be your friend on Snapchat. It's just like for my privacy and protection. But I promise you, I probably will see the Snapchat or the Snapchat message eventually. Bye guys. Love all of you.